What is up my friends, welcome back to another video. And today's video is pretty important because it's a question I've gotten a lot. And that's pretty much how do you set up a session with contact? And I think it's pretty important, especially if you're working with orchestral libraries because contact is really the industry standard when it comes to samplers and uh, working with orchestral instruments because there are some other players, but none of them really are as common as contact, at least as of this video, as of this recording. So we're gonna get into my setup and it's very, very simple, but I think it's important to note anyway and just to go through the basic uh, workflow of using contact. So uh, let's start off with um, the DAW itself. It really doesn't matter what DAW you're using. So I prefer to use Logic just because I'm, I, I like you know, Mac, so that's what I personally use, but you could be on Cubase, you could be using um, Ableton or Pro Tools or Studio One or whatever have you. Um, it really applies to any situation. So all you need to do is make sure you have, um, you know, native instruments, uh, contact installed into your computer, and then comes the process of actually adding contact into the DAW, right? So what, when you're doing the installation process, that will automatically happen, but when we actually get into it, for example, here in Logic, all you need to do is make sure you have a software instrument track chosen. It may be called something slightly different in your DAW. Um, I'm gonna take away this default menu. And then I'm gonna go into the inspector window and make sure I look for the instrument slot. So that's where I can input any of my instruments, right? So I'm gonna go into AU instruments, go into native instruments because that's installed. And I'm gonna look for contact. So this is contact six. Uh, contact five was the old version. So now I'm looking at number six and there are some different options here, but I'm actually going to go for the 16 times stereo. So what this, this is going to do is allow me to assign basically 16 different instruments inside of contact and actually output them as well into logic. So I'm going to click on that loading plugins and now we have contact pulled up. Okay. Now, before I load in any instruments, what I'm going to do is actually go into the mixer window and you should have this as well in your DAW. I can close it for now. And you can see this little plus sign on the bottom right, which allows me to add extra tracks to this one particular contact instance. Okay, so uh, what I'm gonna do is click it until I get all 15 tracks. There we go. So you can see auxiliary one all the way to auxiliary 15, right? Now you notice, however, that those tracks are not appearing on the arranger window. So I need to actually create tracks for that to actually play the instruments in the arrange window. So I highlighted all of them. I right click on one of the tracks. I go up to create a track. And now I have my auxiliary tracks loaded up. Now, unfortunately, these are not in order. So I'm gonna quickly rearrange. So tracks one, two, three, four, um, and so on. Make sure those are loaded in properly. Five, oops, open that back up. Five, six, seven. Of course, this is important because when you're actually working, you wanna make sure that the instruments you have loaded up in contact match the correct channels on your DAW. So there we go. Those are the 15 tracks now loaded in. So now what I can do is actually, I can go into contact and I can start loading in instruments. If, let's say I wanna start with a piano and then now this, instrument will automatically be applied to the general channel. Okay. And actually, let me turn on my keyboard here, which I should have done beforehand. Uh, but there we go. So now we have the, uh, this instrument pulled up and then we can add in some additional ones. Let's say I want to bring in, I don't know, a, uh, a short brass sound. Let's say I want to bring in a, uh, let's say a string line, maybe a cello pizzicato or something, right? Now, if I play this on the track, you'll notice. The signal is not only showing up within contact itself, but it's also showing up here on on the track itself in Logic as the output, right? However, if I click on the auxiliary track and now play the brass horn short, listen to this or watch this. So we get the sound appearing in the contact patch itself, but we actually don't get it on the auxiliary channel. And the same thing for the cello pizzicato here. So if we just, uh, I, I, in Logic, I have to click on the channel in order to 
um, select that articulation or instrument, so then I can actually play it. Okay. Um, but again, you notice the output does not show up here on the track itself. So what is the solution there? Well, all you need to do is go here, presets batch configuration, and make sure this is showing. I think if you go up here, you can click on what you want to show up on the bottom here. So for example, the keyboard, the outputs, all this information is showing, and I just leave this on default. So I click this, I go to batch functions, and then I click on the first option, clear output section and create one individual channel for each loaded instrument. Once I click on that, I click on yes. And now you can see the output has created its own individual channel named after the instrument. So this will now output to channel number three, as you can see here. So if I click on, or if I play this now, and now the volume is showing on the track itself. Right now, you might be asking yourself, why is this so important? Because when it comes to mixing and balancing levels and everything, you're actually not going to be going within the patches themselves to be doing your balances. You're actually going to go into the faders on those actual tracks and balancing them that way. Okay, that, that's how most people mix. They use the faders on their tracks in Logic or in whatever DAW you're using. So that's a very important thing to consider as well. A little bonus tip is whenever you come uh, or whenever you purchase a, a new library for contact, make sure you batch resave, which will basically speed up the loading times of your libraries dramatically. And I've done a separate video on this, but really quickly, all you need to do is make sure you click, um, you click on this floppy disk and then go into batch resave. It's going to ask you to, um, it's going to give you this message basically, and you, you're going to click on yes. And then basically you're going to go into your sample library, basically wherever you've stored it. And let's say you want to uh, batch resave, um, let's say Berlin Symphonic Harps. You click on that instrument, you click on open, and then it's basically going to resave all the instruments and make sure that when you're working with the instrument next time, when you drag in a patch into contact, it's going to load in very, very quickly. And I don't know the exact technical reasoning behind this, but that's just how it works. Okay. And yeah, that's pretty much my setup for contact. And then if I need more instances of contact, then naturally I'll load in more software instrument tracks and do the same thing, create 15 more auxiliary tracks and make sure they're labeled correctly and you know ordered correctly and all that. But what's really important to note is, is um, basically whenever you're loading instruments, make sure that you've done this batch function uh, by clicking on the first option, then all the output volumes will show up on the individual tracks, which will help you with uh, balancing and automation and mixing when you get to that phase. So that is basically the essentials of contact. Uh, short and sweet video. Thank you for watching. I hope it made sense. And if you're kind of, you know, if you're, if you're an orchestral composer or if you're, you know, looking for some recommendations for some sample libraries. If you're just getting into this game, um, I have a gift for you uh, for watching this video. It's my personal guide on my favorite sample libraries, um, specifically on like strings, brass, woodwinds, percussion, um, piano libraries, jazz libraries, ethnic libraries, all of that stuff. You know, people ask a lot of questions about what are the best libraries to use. Um, for like what if your budget is this like you know what would you personally recommend so I put together a, uh, a quite large PDF talking about my personal recommendations and I want to give it to you absolutely free for watching this video so um, just download it in the first link in the description box below um, you can print it out or just keep it on your computer hopefully it helps you with your next marketing uh, or sorry, your next sample library purchase and uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comment below if you use contact uh, how do you find this workflow um, because it's an industry standard so a lot of people you know are pretty used to it and use it a lot i don't consider myself a contact expert of any sort i just use it because in most of the libraries I have to run use contact. So, uh, you know, this is just the basic workflow I go with when I'm working. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video and take care. Bye-bye.